Right, we'll do some uh, technical specifications so you can get an idea what you can and what you can't do. Uh, you need to know the limitations of uh, a particular um, bracket and how you can move them and to what degree you can move them. So we'll select these and obviously um, we can rotate I'll put some guidelines in here. We can rotate about this point here. So the maximum movement uh, it can move is 90 degrees left and right. So that can that can be either any pair of brackets. Um, again, uh, this could move this right one could move 45 and this left one could move 45, but the maximum movement is 90 degrees. Now the next one is um, shows the limitations for rotation. Let me just uh, put a guideline in there. Now what we need to do is um, the all of these four angles are equal, uh, so it will only in its current configuration um, allow the, we won't allow any movement at all between the angle of these. So you can you can move it. Uh, Two directions along this axis or along um, this axis at the moment uh, but if we I'll demonstrate this now if we make this bottom angle less and the top angle more we get uh, obviously this joint opening up So yeah, as you can see there, uh, that was the uh, a little bit tricky. Um, if we have one of these um, bent out, so that what that gives us is uh, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, more than 90, and then less than 90. Um, that's more or less a free form. If there's any kind of symmetry, like uh, we have a big, like this one was moved over here, so that you had the same angle here, then these. Um, what do you call them? Packers, really, aren't they? Uh, these packing tubes would be the same length because it's symmetrical. As it is, we've we've done a, a asymmetrical bend in here along along the face, um, and that uh, causes this to. We need a um, sh I call that a shim, I think, uh, a large shim here and a little shim there. But you can see that all the holes line up, and you can see here we go that that rotates exactly the same even though it's shimmed so you have we have um put that back where it was we have a uh, movement again you could move this one by shimming it um in a different direction so you have full independent movement of the um struts you have rotation uh, this direction up to 90 degrees uh, you can um Trying to think of all the other all the other things you can do. Obviously, you can have a limit. There's a limitless number of struts connecting at a point. The more struts you have, however, the larger the hole in the middle. Right. Uh, this is our pipe, uh, and all you need um, is a captured nut or something in the centre. It doesn't have to be metal. It could, this could be wood uh, with a pre-drilled hole ready for a screw. Um, plastic tube, metal tube, and um, square timber doesn't really matter, as long as you can get a fixing into the end. Now the next part is the base section. This is the uh, redesigned base section, and what we've done is we've um, broadened the base so that it's it's uh, got more surface area against the end of the pole because that will stop it um, putting any stress on the bolt. Again, we, we need to make the joint between uh, this ring and this ring as thick as possible while maintaining uh, the, how this has to be as close to this ring as possible. Uh, if we look at the 
um, top bracket. Uh, again, the minimum dis what we want is the minimum dis possible distance between these two um, holes, uh, because that way we can keep the um, all these uh, edge material as thick as possible, which gives us that's where it gets its strength from. And then you uh, put a bolt in here. This one I've got. A, I've countersunk the um, top bracket because uh, the bolt was actually getting in the way of a few, uh, not not often, um, but on a, on a few occasions it would get in the way and it would be dip, difficult to um, tighten. So we've done a flush fit in there. Right, let's take a look at engineering drawings, cross sections and things. Um, some folk have said that it, when we got the 3D prints out it looked quite tiny. Um, that's because obviously our drones are uh, were zoomed in fairly large. Um, you can see from the measurements on here that uh, the ring, if you like, on on this top bracket is uh, only 14 millimeters in diameter, with a six millimeter hole in it, uh, which is uh, M6 for an M6 bolt. So that'll be a tiny bit more than six mil, but it wouldn't show up on the drone here. Um, so yeah, the the uh, this pipe here I think is scaled at 25 millimeters. So this this would quite easily uh, you could put um, two inch 50 by 50 millimeters um, square carcass timber. No problem. This would join that no problem at all. And you could go up to I don't think you could go up to scaffold pipe. But you could certainly go into all of the conduit. This would fix all the conduit sizes, um, timbers, bamboos. Uh, so this is probably the, the, uh, the right size for um, general building, uh, you know, uh, structures up to maybe, uh, you know, six, seven, eight meters. Oh, and we have uh, finally decided on a name as well. Uh, we're going to call it... Um, Unilink, without the I, um, as in universal linkage. Uh, I thought that would do for a, a logo. I've got a website, so we'll be bringing that online shortly. Um, I've got a chat to manufacturers um, to look at production and see if we can, can't get something production. But I'm also going to look at if I can make a simple version by hand. Um, I had to go with some some. Uh, thick wall pipe to make and welding but uh, because the components are so tiny the welding just melted all of my um, brackets in all into one and they wouldn't be strong enough so I'm going to probably maybe make a bigger section or use something else but I've got to try and maybe get some handmade ones uh, in the meantime while we look at um, uh, we look at uh, possible manufacturers. Uh, also I was thinking that I might at some point do a Kickstarter project. It's a bit early days for that yet. What I need to do is I need to get myself um, maybe four or five hundred brackets made by hand. No idea what that will cost at the minute. Um, we, I have these on order from the 3D printers and I'm, I've got uh, 24 pairs and that's cost £90. So to get enough to build a dome is going to, is going to cost about 500 quid, uh, which is um, too much, to be honest, to have a, to, for a 3D printed version. I'd have to go with that if I had no other choice, but I'm going to have a look at different options. Uh, I need to have some uh, prototypes to make a full dome, um, a, a full-sized um, product, so that we can you know, swing off of it, test it, and that before we go into full production, because... After the last brackets, uh, that's what we did all the research to modify uh, to this current bracket. Uh, this seems to be much better. Yeah, I think it's much more stable. Um, yeah, much more stable this one. Uh, having said that, this one costs twice too much, twice as much nearly to 3D print as the old one. So we could even potentially go back to the old one uh, just for testing structures.